Hello and welcome to The Starving Student. I'm Lauren Murphy and today we're going to be making a fabulous Valentine's Day dinner. Now whether you're a boy who's short on cash wanting to impress that special lady or you're a young lady who feels sorry for yourself because you don't have a boyfriend, this meal is going to be perfect. So we're making some really delicious chicken fettuccine alfredo. Now Italian food is sexy and alfredo is very comforting and those are two things that you don't often get together, much like in a good boyfriend. So. Men, pay attention. This is all about what ladies want. So, on to our fabulous ingredients. We have lots of great things today. So obviously we have our fettuccine. I went with the Ronzoni Garden Delight. It has a full serving of vegetables in it, which is great. So this is not going to be a completely super healthy episode of The Starving Student, but this is going to be healthier than anything you would get at, say, Olive Garden or Macaroni Grill or any of those places. And it's also going to cost you a lot less, which is great. Uh, we have some broccoli florets. We're going to mix those into our Alfredo so we get some much needed vegetables and some fiber and it's going to be awesome. Since we're having carbs, we need some fiber. Got to balance it out. We've got some Fresh Attitude Half and Half Greens. They're mixed greens and baby spinach. They're on sale this week. We're going to make a wonderful salad with those that's going to be cute and uh, a nice little light addition to our meal. So that's going to be great. We've got some tomato, cucumber to go in our salad. For dessert, we have some fresh strawberries, and we're going to make homemade whipped cream, which is going to be a lot better for you, you know, than a hydrogenated soybean oil-based ready whip kind of thing. Um, so even though it is full fat, heavy whipping cream, you're making it yourself, it's going to be natural, and you're not getting all those weird chemicals that they put into the stuff you get out of a can. Also, it's going to taste way better, and your lovely lady is going to be way more impressed. And if you are a lovely lady who's making this for yourself, it's going to taste good. You're not going to have to feel sorry about yourself anymore. So, onto our first step, we need to bake some chicken for our chicken fettuccine. I have some already. Got some chicken cutlets, and they have been marinating in an urban garlic marinade, um, which is something you can get, you know, pretty, pretty standard type of marinade. I'm just going to pop them out here and get them onto our pan. So, our oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Pretty standard temperature for baking chicken. And our pan is pre-greased. So we're only going to use three chicken cutlets in our recipe, but there are four in our box and I'm going to cook all of them because I like to use chicken cutlets for other things like making wraps and other meals throughout the week for myself. So I might as well just cook all of them now while I'm marinating them and then I won't have to deal with it later. And that's going to be great. So just put them on your pan there so they're all spread out. Deal with our chicken water later. Fabulous. We've got some Paula Deen Italian seasoning. It's in a little grinder thing. That's kind of exciting. If I can get it off. Okay, there we go. We're just going to... Ooh, yeah. This is kind of messed up. So you know what? We're not going to use that, even though that Italian seasoning is fabulous. I think the cap is a little weird. But we can make our own seasoning combination with some salt and pepper, some onion garlic powder, and again, our cutlets are already marinated, so they're already going to have a lot of flavor. So just sprinkle liberally. Again, this is, a, this is an art, not a science. When we get to the, uh, the making of the whipped cream, that's going to be more of a science. There's a lot, of, a lot of things we have to consider in terms of making pastry items. So we'll get to that. So we're just going to do that. That looks pretty good. We're going to pop our chicken in. It's going to take about... 12 minutes, it's going to take a lot less time than our full-fledged chicken breast because they are thinner. So we're going to set our timer, 12 minutes, and I would always rather set the timer for less time than more time because overdone chicken, not a good thing. But you can always cook it for longer, so that's a great thing. Okay, we're moving on to our Alfredo sauce. So if you have made Alfredo and just got the sauce out of the jar, you are missing out on a whole plethora of flavors that you didn't even know existed, and it's going to be so delicious. And that's exactly what we're going to make. So we have our large skillet here. We're going to turn it on to about six-ish. This is going to require an entire stick of butter. Now, you can use Smart Balance butter, you can use a heart-healthy margarine, doesn't really matter. But if you're a young lady who doesn't have a boyfriend, feel free to use as much butter as you want. Um, you know, it's Valentine's Day. It can it can be as happy or as as sappy as you make it. So if you want to go eat this and watch the vow by yourself, you know, go go do that. It's okay. 
Um, so we're going to pop our whole stick of butter in here. No shame. No shame with our stick of butter. It's going to be super delicious. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Okay. So what we're going to do with our stick of butter is we're going to make a roux. So if you don't know what a roux is, it's a French term for like a thickener. And basically what's going to happen is you know, we want our sauce to be creamy and buttery, but we don't want it to be watery. And that's what would happen if we didn't have this roux in our sauce. So we're going to get our stick of butter nice and melty, and we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. So I have organic whole wheat flour, which is a good type of flour to use, pretty fabulous. Um, and two tablespoons is actually the equivalent of an eighth of a cup. So if you're like, oh, you know, you could just use two spoons, you could use an eighth of a cup if you have one, you know, same thing. We're, we're converting, we're, uh, we're making things work here. So our butter's the Okay, that happens sometimes. It's fine, it's Valentine's Day. The chicken apparently didn't want to be in the oven, so they had a bad relationship. Um, mostly the bad relationship was probably with the pan, but it's okay. Anyway, so butter's getting melty, that's great. We're gonna add our eighth of a cup of organic flour, our whole grain flour, pretty fabulous. All right, so what we want to do is make sure all of that flour gets covered with our melted butter. Um, there's nothing worse than burned flour. It tastes really nasty, so we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna let that happen. So basically, we're gonna let that get all melty and all cooked down, and then we're gonna start adding our other sauce ingredients. So if you're curious as to what else goes into um, a nice Alfredo sauce. There's the obvious Parmesan cheese. That's, you know, where the sauce gets its cheesy white body. We have some heavy cream that goes in there, which is the creamy base. I like to add wine to my Alfredo sauce. And if you're not 21, if you don't have somebody who goes out and buys cooking wine for you, you know, that's okay. Um, you can use a little bit of grape juice if you want, or you can omit the wine altogether. I really like it, though, because it adds, like, a nice depth of kind of like a a whiny, I know, a whiny flavor. Um, it's like a sweetness and it's, it really brings out the, the Parmesan cheese and the saltiness and I really, really like it. So, I have a nice Pinot Grigio here. Uh, it was four dollars. So, just goes to show you, you don't have to uh, spend a lot to be fancy. Um, and it was on sale for four dollars, so it was, it was worth a little more than that. I'm not, you know, somebody who just gets four dollar wine. Um, but, you know, I'm a college student, so so may you be, so it's, it's okay. Um, we're going to get a cup of our fabulous wine. Now, you can use any type of white wine. I would suggest a Pinot Grigio. Um, I've made it with Moscato before, which is even cheaper, and that's still very delicious. So we got a whole cup in there. Again, our wine was only $4, so not a big deal if we use a lot of it. All right, so we can see... Our roux is getting nice and sizzly and nice and thick. All our butter and our flour in there. We're just going to mix it around. Make sure all that butter is nice and melted. Oh yeah. And we're going to add our wine. Okay, we're going to let that cook down for just a little bit. All of the alcohol is going to burn off and we're going to have that nice sweet grapey flavor. Then we're going to start adding our cream and our spices and, and all of that jazz. Um, for now, though, we're going to turn our pasta water on, which I probably should have done in the beginning, turning that up to high, and then we'll put our pasta in in a little bit. Um, and we can also start on our salad. How about that? So, um, we are going to make a very simple salad, but it's going to be really pretty. The presentation is going to be great, and everyone is going to be so impressed with you. We have, like I said, our half and half. This is a really good base for a salad. It's nice because, you know, if, if you're not really a spinach fan, you're getting the leafy greens, and if you would rather have spinach, which is kind of better for you, you know, you're good to go. So we have our two salad bowls here. Now, this salad is, like I said, super simple, but whoever you make this for is going to be really, really impressed. We're going to add some simple touches that are really going to make this a very special salad, and your, uh, your sweetheart is going to be very, very pleased with the amount of effort it looks like you put into this salad. So, 
So for you, for you gentlemen who don't know, you know, who are kind of unsure of, you know, of cooking or of what ladies like, as long as you put the effort in, you know, the a, a good girl who who's nice and not just after your money uh, will appreciate that. And that's, you know, that's something that I really appreciate. You know, I love when a boy makes me dinner. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be, you know, fancy. But the thought that goes into it is, you know, that's what every girl wants. So just so you're aware, if you do this, you're going to be good to go. All right, so we've got the base for our salad. Ooh, and this is getting very bubbly. Like I said, all that alcohol is going to cook off. You're seeing that it's getting this nice creamy texture, and that's fabulous. So we're at, it's at about six right now. We're going to turn it down to around five. Four or five, just so it's not so hot once we put that cream in. Cream is really, really sensitive to temperature, so we don't want our cream to burn. So we want it to have a nice, you know, kind of medium temperature pan, like pan to go into um, so it doesn't get all curdly and yucky. So that's our deal. Um, now, rest of our salad, we're going to get a tomato, dice up about half of it, and put either half in our salad. Super easy. Yeah, gentlemen, you can totally make this. Not hard. We're just going to sprinkle that over, and it just adds some really nice color to our salad. Obviously, we all know red is the color of love, so that's what we're going for. If that's not what we're going for, if we're, you know, ladies feeling sorry about ourselves, uh, it's okay. We're still going to have a healthy salad. So we're going to have comfort food and a healthy salad, and we're going to feel great, and we don't need a boyfriend. That's what you need to say to yourself as you make this. It's not what I'm going to say to myself, because I feel great. But anyway... Okay, so we've got our half a tomato. Uh, we're going to grab our cucumber. We're going to chop about half of our, eh, maybe a third of our cucumber. We don't need a lot of cucumber. It's just two little salads. So just a little bit is going to do you just fine. I never understand why I don't peel cucumbers before I start cooking because they're such a pain in the butt. And they're packed in this tight little shrink wrap. And it's not a good thing. But that's okay. <laughs> Get out your anger on your cucumber. Ladies. <laughs> okay. So we're chopping that in half. We are going to make little hearts out of our cucumber. And it's going to be really precious. So, cucumbers are luckily already a circle. All you have to do, shave a little bit off this side. Shave a little bit off the other side. Got a nice triangle going on. Super easy to do. We're going to do a little notch down the middle. We're going to do another little notch down the middle. How precious is that? Oh my gosh, how impressed is a girl going to be if you make that for her? It's so cute. It didn't take you any time at all. But it looks like you thought about it and you were like, Oh my gosh, this would be so cute. Obviously you didn't say that because you're manly. But a girl who thinks you say that is going to think you're really precious and adorable. We're going for that dichotomy between sexy and comforting. So that's exactly what girls want. That's why we're making this meal. That's how you need to be as a boyfriend. I give cooking advice and love advice too. So we're just going to chop these up into little bite-sized pieces. Just like you normally would. And just put them right on the salad. Oh my gosh, look at how cute those are. I would be so excited if somebody made this for me. I'm just saying. Look at it. It's a little bowl of hearts and there's a little red saladness. It's cute. I would do this if I saw that. If I saw a boy made for this for me, I would just, I would go like that. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing, gentlemen. You want your ladies to do that. So we'll put those in the garbage disposal and I'll deal with them later. And I'll deal with the other tomato later. Now let's get back to our sauce, which is looking... Very buttery and very whiny. It smells great. Getting all that sizzle. Fabulous. Okay, we're going to put a cup of our heavy whipping cream in. 
you can use the same measuring cup you used for your wine. Um, this is a pint because we're going to use the other half of this pint to go into our whipped cream for our strawberries. And we're going to open it so it will actually come out. That is a good thing. All right, so like I said, just a cup. There we go. And we're going to turn this down a little bit more to around three, just because this looks like it's getting kind of hot. So we pour it right in. And this is heavy whipping cream again. It's not half and half. It's not regular whipping cream. It's the good stuff. This is heavy whipping cream. This heavy whipping cream has issues. That's how heavy it is. But you're not going to be heavy after you eat it because you're also having a fabulously adorable salad and some fresh fruit for dessert. And if you are heavy after you eat it, you know, whatever. Now you have a boyfriend, so it's good. Yay, Valentine's Day. Okay, so now we can see that our sauce is getting very creamy. We're going to let that start simmering. Like I said, it's down to around three, which is exactly where we want it. And once that starts bubbling, we're going to add the cheese. And is our water boiling yet? Almost. And then we'll add in our pasta. We'll be good to go. So, um, we have one more adorable touch to our salad. Oh, well before we do that, looks like our chicken is done. So, I'll grab that out of the oven. Oh, gorgeous. Okay. Chicken is done. Chicken smells great. Chicken looks all the way done. Good to go. 12 minutes turned out to be perfect. Let me check it really quick just to make sure. But I think it's going to be good. Oh yeah, totally perfect. Okay, we're going to let that cool and sit right there. We're eventually going to chop it up and throw it into our sauce. Or you can leave it as a whole chicken cutlet if you want. I like it all mixed in. Again, depends on your taste. Doesn't really matter. Okay, back to our adorable salad. So, we have some bread, and with a simple heart cookie cutter, you can make the most precious croutons you've ever had on a salad. So, I simply took the cookie cutter, put it in the bread, like so, and there you go. How cutie is that? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave it in here for now because it's going to be easier to toast this way. I've got four of them just like that. We're going to add some yumminess to our croutons and have them be kind of Italian. So we've got some Parmesan cheese, just a couple little shakes right there. It's going to melt right over and be awesome. And I really like garlic toast, so it's going to be a garlicky thing. Awesome. All you have to do Put that in the toaster for as long as you would normally toast toast. Toast, toast, toast. Um, <laughs> anyway, I have a toaster oven, which is kind of better for this exercise. If you have a pop-up toaster, it might be kind of difficult. But you could always use a normal oven. I'm going to get everything out of the way of the toaster oven. So I can stick this in here. All right, and that's getting toasty. And looks like our water is ready for our pasta, which is great. Pasta is only going to take about 10 minutes, which is exactly how long the rest of our dinner is going to take. And like I said, I got the Garden Delight. You could get a whole grain fettuccine, whole grain fettuccine. Um, you could get any other type that you like. I like the Garden Delight because it has those veggies in it that you don't usually get um, on a in a pasta dish so and it's such it's beautiful colors so that's great and we're gonna break it good thing I went to body sculpt this week all right another handy tip for you gentlemen um, girls love things that are fun colors and a lot of people don't understand that when I first tell them but if you've ever had a girlfriend you'll understand you know things that are sparkly things that are pretty colors we're all about that. So if you make your dinner that way, you're going to have smooth sailing. Okay, we're just going to bend that in there. We're going to cover that over, and we're going to be good. All right, so 
cream sauce is ready to receive some lemon from our Parmesan cheese. Now this is going to take quite a bit of Parmesan cheese, um, probably about six ounces or three quarters of a cup. You can cheese it up as much as you want. Um, not in person on your date because girls don't really like that. But you can cheese up your sauce. So we've got our Parmesan cheese here, which I don't think is open yet. I need to peel off the freshness seal, which is always a big pain, especially since I just did my nails. That's okay. There we go. I guess I could use that other Parmesan cheese that I used on the, uh, the first, our little toasts, but you know, I like to make things difficult sometimes. So then you're gonna be very liberal with this cheese and just dump it right in. And we're gonna turn this down a little bit so it doesn't boil over. Okay, yeah, that looks like enough cheese. It's a lot of cheese. Um, and that's okay because yeah, let me take care of this really quick. A lot of cheese is okay because, again, we want it to be a comforting meal. We want it to be flavorful. And if you were go, you know, if you were to go to an Olive Garden or a place like that, they would have just as much cheese. So you're not doing anything wrong. And in fact, you're doing them one better because you have this healthy vegetable pasta. You've got this great salad. Notice that our salad doesn't have onions in it because, you know, duh, we're. We're working toward a goal here, and if kissing is part of that goal, you're not going to want onions. And I never understood why Olive Garden thought it was a good idea to put 8,000 onions in their salad. I'm just saying, not a good first date idea. So you don't put onions on your salad, boys or ladies, because you know what? Onions are very strong. We don't need that. We've got a lot of other strong flavors going on, and we, we don't need any onion action. So, ooh, our toasts are looking good. Um, so we're going to mix this in really quick, just start getting our sauce all good to go. And we're going to be able to turn this down below now. Oh my goodness, and that smells great. And you know what, I'm just going to take this lid off because I think it's making the problem worse. So that's okay. Oh, and our toast for our adorable salad is done. Mostly. I'll take it out of there in just a second. All right, cheese is a little lumpy, that's okay. All right, this is where you taste your sauce and see if there's enough cheese. Oh yeah. We need a little more cheese. We also need some spices. So, before we add more cheese, we have our same spices as before, our onion powder, our garlic powder. Be very liberal with the garlic powder. Since it's not raw garlic, you're not going to have uh, kissing issues. So feel free to add as much garlic powder as you want. Raw garlic or chopped garlic, you're going to need to be a little more conservative with that. Got some pepper. There we go. Um, Parmesan cheese is already pretty salty, so when I tasted it, I didn't think it needed any more salt. If you want to go ahead and salt your you know, sauce a little bit more, totally up to you. Um, our last is basil, which we have right here. You could use basil or parsley or a combination of both. I like basil because it brings a nice little Italian flair to it. Beautiful. So we're going to mix that all in. Remember, we're on low right now. Oh my gosh, this smells incredible. And it looks beautiful. Definitely looks Italian restaurant quality. So I'm excited about that. And it tastes great. I don't think that needs any, eh, maybe a little bit more cheese. I like the cheese, so there we go. And just stir that in, and you'll be good. Okay, other quick 
thing to deal with. Like I said, we're going to have some broccoli in our chicken parmesan, or our, sorry, chicken alfredo. We have one of these broccoli florette steam in bags. All you have to do, smash it with a fork, just like that. That's a great thing for you ladies who are not excited about Valentine's Day. I guess men could not be excited about Valentine's Day too, but you know, you're always in a position to change your position. And you can do that by making a very nice young lady some dinner. If anyone wants to come make me dinner, you're welcome to. Um, okay, so about four minutes on that and then our broccoli is gonna be perfect. There we go. Um, let's check the pasta. Still needs a couple more minutes, which is great because that means we can finally finish up our salad, which I've been trying to get back to, you know, for quite some time. Pulling out our toast here. The great thing about this is uh, our croutons are going to pop right out. We're going to pop them right on top of our salad. There we go. Your croutons don't pop right out. Just go back in there with the cookie cutter and make it happen. That one got a little awkward. You can eat that one, boys. That's okay. <laughs> now look at how precious that is. It didn't take you any time at all. Super simple, but it looks like you spent so much time on it. So those are really cute. We're gonna dress them with a little bit of a balsamic dressing. That's kind of my favorite for Italian things. If you wanna use Italian, if you wanna use Catalina, um, you know, a, a raspberry vinaigrette or something, that's perfect too. But I like the balsamic vinaigrette. Fabulous. So we've got our two salads ready to go. I'm gonna put them over here, so we're gonna be ready to eat those when we're ready to eat everything else, which is gonna be great. All right, so we have some chicken to plate, we have some whipped cream to make, and we have some strawberries to put in a bowl. Let me plate the chicken first because I'm thinking our pasta is going to be done really soon. And our plates are over here. Now, trick is, if you don't want to feel too full to do something fun after dinner, you guys are going to go rock climbing or, you know, have a second fun part of your date, um, have tiny plates. You know, you can serve the salad along with a smaller portion of this fettuccine, and you're not going to be so overloaded. So that's some great advice on how to still eat what you want, but, you know, still be healthy about it. Have, have smaller portions. Have some portion control. The other great thing is since we're not going to a restaurant, we have control over, you know, how much we're eating and how much we're, you know, having in one sitting. And that's, that's one of the great things about cooking for yourself. So I'm going to take our two nicest chicken breasts. If I can get them off. There we go. Beautiful, and I'll save those for later. We're gonna get a little bit of our Alfredo sauce right over here. Yum. You're gonna have lots of Alfredo on the pasta, so don't worry about that. What I like to do is put some basil right on top of this so it looks really fresh and green. So we have our basil over here. If you have fresh basil, this would be a great opportunity to use it. We have fresh basil, but it's outside and our neighbors are smoking again downstairs, so I'm not going to go get it. Okay, let's check on our pasta. Looks like it's pretty much done. Might need another minute or two. I guess we'll find out if I can get one on my little pasta fork here. Mm. Perfectly al dente after 11 minutes. And convenient, our broccoli finished at the exact same time. How often does that happen? Okay, so we're going to drain our pasta. And look at how beautifully colored it is. 
probably can't see because of all the steam. There we go. We're going to turn that off and just let that hang out over there. Um, all right, so we've got our pasta, which is very steamy, but very lovely. We're going to pop that right into our Alfredo. Gorgeous. And we have our broccoli. And this is going to be super hot, so be careful. When they say steam in bag, they mean scalding hot steam in bag. Will burn you. Don't touch it. Which I think they say something similar to that on the back of the bag. But we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. Just pour it right in there. Yay, so we're getting about three servings of vegetables with our lovely Alfredo here. We're gonna start mixing it all in with our sauce. Mmm, smells really good. All right, so our pasta is ready and it looks fabulous. As you can see, we've got our chicken, we've got our Alfredo, we've got our awesome salads, and now on to dessert. So we have some freshly washed strawberries in a bowl. We're gonna make some homemade whipped cream. We've got the rest of our heavy whipping cream. We're gonna pour that right into a bowl. This is gonna be a great chance to show off how much you've worked out at the gym. We are going to whip this cream and it's gonna take a lot of upper body strength. So we're gonna start just like that. And we're gonna come back when our cream is whipped. We're going to add some confectioner sugar and then we're gonna eat. So that is going to be your fabulous dinner for two and we're gonna come back and when it's all done. Okay, so if you haven't been going to the gym, whipping it by hand is a bad idea, but you should get a beater. So we have our whipped cream, which was a half, or I guess a cup of heavy whipping cream and a tablespoon of confectioner sugar. We're gonna dip our strawberries in that. We've got our beautifully adorable hearts of love salad. We have our fettuccine and our chicken and whoever you make this for is going to fall in love with you because there's so much thought that looks like went into this um, and it's gonna be really delicious. So until next time with all of your cooking needs, I'm Lauren Murphy and this was The Starving Student. Bon Appetit. <laughs>